When it comes to the winter holidays, images of family, friends, and lighthearted magic usually come to mind. However, behind tales of Santa Claus, elves, and reindeer lies a history of spookiness surrounding the holiday. From Christmas devils punishing naughty children, to grim spirits predicting a deadly fate, there is a lot of creepy elements that come with Christmas, and considering we like to talk about the creepy things when it comes to theme parks, spooky things on this channel, uh, one name comes to mind when it comes to spookiness and theme parks. While Halloween Horror Nights occurs during the Halloween season and typically focuses on stories within that context, the mix of Christmas and Halloween for a creepy take on a relatively friendly friendly holiday is an interesting one, and HHN has had enough Christmas slash holiday themed houses for it to warrant a video. To celebrate the holidays, I wanted to share the history and effectiveness of the holiday houses of HHN in both Orlando and Hollywood. So grab your eggnog and pizza fries, because I'm become the ghost of HHN past, and we're about to go back in time a bit. Now due to the lighthearted nature of the holidays I was talking about, most of these houses are going to take a generally comedic tone. And while Halloween Horror Nights has always incorporated comedy into the event, the first 15 years or so was really not focused on doing like comedy slash parody houses because they really wanted to solidify their identity as a scary event. So for the first holiday house on this list, we must go all the way to HHN 17 for Psychoscarapy Home for the Holidays. Now if that Psychoscarapy name sounds familiar, that's because it is the third entry in the Psychoscarapy house series, with the first being the original Psychoscarapy at HHN 13, and its sequel being the Jack the Clown themed Psychoscarapy Maximum Madness at HHN 16. Originally titled Silent Night Psychotic Nights, this house focused on a group of inmates from Shady Brook Asylum, the location of the series, who crashed the Christmas festivities by wreaking havoc on the residents of a quiet neighborhood. Located in Soundstage 23, along with Nightmare on Elm Street Dreamwalkers, this was seen as the year's comedy house, and had a lot of interactive features on the HHN website, something they unfortunately don't do much of anymore. The interior facade would be a house, complete with a crashed van, and as guests walked into this first house, they would see a gift-wrapped head and the preparation of cookies made of human flesh. Gross. After passing by a few more gory scenes in the backyard, the next house featured a dummy hung by Christmas lights that would flicker and twitch. Moving into a nearby shed, the inmates could be seen preparing gruesome toys, and the final scene, another living room, would feature an inmate in a Santa Claus outfit wielding a chainsaw. Overly gory, this house used its over-the-top kills in a mundane setting to play up the comedy factor. And considering the goofy nature of these kills, it wasn't really meant to be taken too seriously. I also think it is interesting that guests travel from house to house rather than staying in one setting to add some variety to the sets and expand the story beyond like these inmates just terrorizing one family. While likely the least memorable of the Psychoscarapy series, it still got a nod in the ever-popular Jack Presents 25 years of Monsters and Mayhem at HHN 25, and that's one of the greatest honors a house can get at HHN. Our next house brings us four years into the future at HHN 21, where we get another comedy house from Cary Ohio's very own HR Blood and Guts in HR Blood and Guts Presents Holidays of Horror. Located in the former Disaster Queue, this house would be a twisted version of many different holidays, including Valentine's Day, Easter, Thanksgiving, and of course, Christmas. The host for this house, HR Blood and Guts, was a new character that came with a backstory relating to that event's icon, Lady Luck. A former actor, Larry Kurtzberg, was down on his luck until he got a mysterious call offering him the role of a lifetime. After becoming HR Blood and Guts, he created controversy after controversy, and in his final broadcast, he'd be showcasing a scarathon of holiday based horror. While Psychoscarapy had its moments of campiness, this house is a full blown comedy house, with the emphasis on comedy being present from the Kooky Q video all the way through the house itself. The scene dedicated to Christmas, titled Ho Ho Homicide, features fed up elves attacking guests with toy machine guns, while Mrs. Claus's corpse lies dead on a table, and the big man himself sits decapitated, a familiar sight to those who visited home for the holidays. And immediately following this scene, HR Blood and Guts reappears, wishing the guests farewell as he performs one final kill. While it's brief, the Christmas elements found in this house are more 
more based on the holidays mythology and iconography rather than traditions that have kind of evolved over time, which is more of the focus in the Psychoscarapy house. And plainly put, regardless of how short it is, when talking about Christmas, Halloween Horror Nights houses, you can't really avoid this one. That is because while HR Blood and Guts wasn't necessarily the most popular house of its year, it has grown a kind of cult-like following with many fans clamoring to see him again. And they would finally get to see him again at HHN 30 when he appeared in the Welcome to Scary Horror in the Heartland house along with some of the elements from Holidays of Horror. Now jumping across coasts, we are going to go visit Hollywood for the first in a pretty long line of holiday related offerings at HHN. However, this first one isn't a maze, but a scare zone. The Dark Christmas Scare Zone, featured in 2014 and 2015, took a more grounded approach than the previous houses, focusing on the dark side of pagan holiday traditions. This scare zone primarily featured Krampus, the Christmas Devil, but would also feature dark versions of Santa and Mrs. Claus, as well as Jack Frost, creepy elves, and static monster figures. While sometimes forgotten, this scare zone up the creepiness surrounding the holiday, playing less into the comedy factor than Orlando's offerings, and setting the stage for a new holiday horror IP to come to both coasts. 2016 brought Krampus to HHN for both Hollywood and Orlando, which was a house based on Michael Doherty's 2015 film of the same name. In the movie, a dysfunctional family pays for their infighting once Krampus and his minions start taking out family members around the holidays. And the house essentially follows that same storyline. In Orlando, the house was located in the former Shrek Theater, and began with guests entering the house featured in the film. They would then pass the living room where a table of sentient gingerbread men from the film taunted them while elves came around many corners. They would then proceed to the attic scene where the demonic toys from the film came to life before returning to the living room and ending in Krampus's lair, filled to the brim with evil elves. This version was notable, as it did not feature Krampus himself very much, instead focusing on the elves for the majority of the scares. Compare that to Hollywood's version, which was much more Krampus heavy despite it having a very similar layout. Both mazes took the dark Christmas aesthetic and leaned to the movie's strengths when it comes to its horror, even though the film itself isn't too scary. Despite the overlap though, I'd have to say Hollywood's felt more dynamic, capturing the more action-packed elements of the movie very well, and featuring more of the titular character, who's really successful at getting the scare because he is so large. While not a big hit initially, I feel like this house and movie are starting to grow on a lot of people. And I know for me, this is the first one that comes to mind when I think of Christmas HHN houses. And here in Orlando, we've been seeing a heavy Krampus theme when it comes to spooky holiday offerings, such as the 2022 All Hallows Eve Krampus Boutique, so maybe Universal is looking to incorporate their own interpretation of the legendary character at a future event. Now while that's the last holiday house for Orlando, Hollywood has kept the Christmas spirit going with a few more mazes and scare zones. 2018's Holidays in Hell Scare Zone revitalized the dark Christmas theme from 2014 and 15, but with all other holidays represented, like the HR Blood and Guts house and some redesigned characters. Located in the Metro lot, the Christmas section of this scare zone was set in a Christmas tree lot, with many of the familiar characters roaming around and scaring guests. That scare zone would become a maze the following year, with the Holidays in Hell maze being located in the Parisian Courtyard location at HHN 2019. The Christmas section featured a similar tree lot, but instead of Santa, Mrs. Claus, or Krampus, Satan Claus, a hellish version of Old Saint Nick, terrorized guests with an axe. And like many of the Parisian Courtyard mazes, it opened up into a themed scare zone, releasing into the Christmas in Hell scare zone. However, there were different characters in here too, with devilish nutcrackers, elves, and a return of Jack Frost. All of these offerings were a balance between the darkness of something like Krampus and the gore found in Holidays of Horror or Dark Christmas. Again, leaning into the mythology of Christmas along with some iconic images like the Nutcracker, for example, which has always been associated with the holiday. And considering this dark take on Christmas theme has been really popular in Hollywood, they did use it for quite a few years, I wouldn't be surprised if we see this come to Orlando at some point um, in some different version, whether it be a house or a scare zone, because sometimes they like to pull from each other. 
While it has been limited in the grand scale of the event, holiday-themed experiences at HHN have ranged in style and execution. From haunting takes on childhood characters to darkly comedic showcases of well-known traditions, Universal has really created a strange yet interesting collection of haunted houses with their Christmas-themed houses. I really hope we get to see more. I think perhaps a spooky Christmas carol or nutcracker would fit well following a sort of scary tales vibe on either coast. Or maybe we could see Universal's take on Krampus as an original. I mean, imagine a really highly themed Krampus house in a soundstage. That would be incredible. But let me know what you would like to see out of a future holiday themed experience at HHN. Let me know in the comments. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. I have now become the ghost of HHN Future, and I see a future where you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. I have one more video planned for the rest of 2022, and then we're going big in 2023. I'm excited for all the stuff coming in 2023, uh, but I will save that for later. For now, have a good one, and I will see you all next time.